Welcome to this lecture about correlation. This lecture is divided into three videos. In the first video, we've learned what correlation is and how to calculate and interpret the Pearson correlation coefficient. In the second video, we'll see how we can use hypothesis testing to tell if the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero and discuss the assumptions behind the Pearson correlation. In the third video, we look at the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient, which is the non-parametric alternative to the Pearson correlation. To understand the concept of correlation, let's consider the following data where one has measured the body weight and body height of six individuals. Let's make a scatter plot of this data. The first individual has a body weight of 61 kilos and a body height of 157 centimeters. In a scatter plot, this is illustrated by a data point with an x-coordinate of 61 and a y-coordinate of 157. The second data point corresponds to the weight and height of the second person. The third person has a weight of 73 kilos and a height of 170 centimeters. This data point represents the weight and height of person number 4, whereas this data point represents person number 5 and this data point represents the weight and height of the last person. Next, we try and draw a line through the data points. Note that the line points up to the right, which means that the line has a positive slope. When the line has a positive slope, we say that the two variables in the scatter plot have a positive correlation, which means that they move in the same direction. A positive correlation means that when the value of one variable increases, then the value of the other variable also increases. This is true for this data because tall persons generally have high body weights, whereas shorter persons have relatively low body weights. The data therefore indicates that there is a positive correlation between body height and body weight. Let's have a look at another example where one has collected information about the price of five similar cars and the age of those cars. This data point represents the price and age of the first car. And this data point represents the price and age of the second car. And this is the third car and so forth. If you try to draw a line through the data, we see that the line points down to the right, which means that it has a negative slope. If the reference line tends to have a negative slope, this means that the two variables have a negative correlation. A negative correlation means that when the value of one variable increases, then the value of the other variable decreases. This is true for this data since older cars have a lower price compared to newer cars which have a higher price. We can therefore draw the conclusion that there is a negative correlation between the two variables price and age. Note that we will get the same negative relationship if instead put the variable age on the y-axis and price on the x-axis, because more expensive cars are newer, whereas less expensive cars are older. In comparison to linear regression, Calculating the correlation does not depend on which variable we put on the y-axis. We therefore do not need to define which are the variables that should be the dependent variable. One measure of correlation is the so-called Pearson correlation coefficient, which measures the linear relationship between two continuous variables. The Pearson correlation coefficient is denoted by little r when the correlation is estimated based on a sample. It is calculated by the sample covariance of the two variables, divided by the product of the sample standard deviation of the separate variables. X represents one of the two variables, and Y represents the other variable. The covariance is a measure of the joint spread of the two variables and is calculated by the following formula, where X bar is the mean of the X variable and y bar is the mean of the y variable. Since we know that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance, the Pearson correlation can also be expressed as the covariance divided by the product of the square root 
are the variance of the individual variables. If you plug in the equations for the covariance and the variances of x and y in the equation for the Pearson correlation coefficient, we'll get the following equation. After eliminating n minus 1, we'll end up with the following equation that is commonly used to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient by hand. However, the following formula annotations will be used throughout this video because this formula is easier to understand. Let's calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient based on our previous example on the weight and height of the six individuals. We define the body weight as the x variable and the body height as the y variable. The mean body weight of the six individuals is 73 kilos and the mean body height is about 175.33 centimeters. The standard deviation of the body weight is about 10.16, whereas the standard deviation of the body height is 12.56. Next, we calculate the covariance between the body weight and the body height. We plug in the mean value of the body weights for x bar and the mean value of the body heights for y bar and the body weight and height of the first person and the second person and for person number 3, 4 and 5 and finally the weight and height of the last person. Then we divide with the sample size minus 1. The covariance is here calculated to 114.6. The covariance can be seen as a measure of how much the two variables spread together. Finally, we calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient by dividing the covariance by the product of the standard deviations. We see that the Pearson correlation coefficient is estimated to 0 0.898. Note that the Pearson correlation coefficient depends on the joint spread of the two variables relative to the spread of the individual variables. Since the standard deviation is always a positive value, the value of the covariance determines if the correlation coefficient is positive or negative. A negative covariance will result in a negative correlation coefficient whereas a positive covariance will result in a positive correlation coefficient. We have estimated the Pearson correlation coefficient between the body weight and body height to 0 0.898. Since this is a positive number, this tells us that there is a positive correlation between the two variables. If we would calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient for the relationship between the price and age of our previous car data, the value of r will be computed to minus 0 0.88. Since this is a negative number, we know that there is a negative correlation between price and age. We also know that the value of the covariance is negative. The Pearson correlation coefficient can only take values between minus 1 and 1. The closer the value of r is to 1, the stronger positive correlation we have. And the closer the value of r is to minus 1, the stronger negative correlation we have. If the Pearson correlation coefficient is 0, this indicates there is no correlation between the two variables. If all our data points would follow a straight line with a positive slope, then the value of the Pearson correlation coefficient is equal to 1. This means that we have a perfect positive correlation between the two variables. If you have some spread of the data around the line, but a clear linear relationship between the two variables, the value of r is usually around 0 0.8. A value greater than 0 0.7 is generally considered as a strong positive correlation. If one can see a weak positive correlation in the data, the value of r is usually around 0 0.4. In this case, it is impossible to identify any relationship because a high value of one variable does not tell if the other variable has a high or a low value. This type of data is expected to have a Pearson correlation coefficient around zero. If the data looks like this, where we can identify a weak negative relationship between the variables, 
the value of r is expected to be somewhere around negative 0.4. If the data appears to be close to a line with a negative slope, we expect that the value of r is around negative 0.8. Values less than negative 0.7 are generally considered to represent a strong negative correlation. If the data would perfectly fit a line with a negative slope, the Pearson correlation coefficient would be equal to negative 1, which tells us that we have a perfect negative correlation. Let's say that we have information from 20 students about their score on a certain exam and the hours they have spent on studying for that exam. Do you think that there would be a positive, negative or no correlation between the two variables? In this case, one would expect a quite strong positive correlation since the more you study, the better score you usually get. However, since students have different amount of background knowledge, we do not expect a perfect positive correlation between the score on the exam and the hours spent on studying. For example, this student may have taken a similar course previously and did therefore not have to study that much whereas this student had very little background knowledge and had to study a lot more to get a similar score. Let's say that we also collected the body height of the students. Do you think that there is a positive or negative correlation between the score on the exam and the body height? One would expect a correlation coefficient close to zero between these two variables because the score on the exam should not depend on the student's body height given that the students are about the same age. For example, short students have about the same scores as tall students. If we also had collected the number of hours the students have spent on social media and online games, we might identify a weak negative correlation since more time on the internet is expected to reduce the time for studying for the exam. Once we have estimated the Pearson correlation coefficient, we usually also like to know if the value of r is significantly different from zero. This is what we will discuss in the next lecture together with the assumptions behind such hypothesis testing based on the Pearson correlation coefficient. See you in the next lecture.